Hello. Often when we have a select field in the form, there can be quite a lot of values to choose from and you would like to add some kind of search functionality. And one of the simplest ways to do it would be adding a JavaScript plugin. Uh, one that I like is SlimSelect. Uh, one of the main reasons is because it doesn't rely on jQuery like other plugins as Selectize do. So um, in this episode we are going to install Slim Select and add a drop down with multiple select options where there will be a search option where we can search for a single value or we are going to add also a multi select where we can select a few options and there will also be a search functionality. So let's start by creating a new Rails app. I'm going to say Rails new select uh, 10, uh, just the name of the app. Let's make the database PostgreSQL and the uh, CSS is going to be Tailwind. And uh, we are not going to specify the JavaScript, but it is going to be import maps by default. So let's create a new app. Okay, let's uh, open the new app, Rails DB create, DB migrate, and let's start the app by typing bin dev. Okay, I've created the new application, now let's uh, save it to git, git add all, git commit main, create, and let's create a model that we are going to be able to select something for. So we are going to have posts and posts can have one user. So we are going to create a drop down select for selecting a user and a drop down select for selecting multiple tags. So let's add all these models. Let's say uh, Rails generate model uh, user and the user is going to have an email. Uh, git add all git commit user then we're going to have uh, a scaffold of posts so rails generates scaffold post uh, body will be text user will be references rails to be migrate git add all git commit scaffold posts and we're going to have a multi-select for tags. So for this, we'll need to have a tag model that is going to have a name and post will have many tags. So there is going to be a joint model post tag. So let's create uh, a new model uh, tag. Rails generate model tag and the tag is going to have a name. Uh, Rails to be migrate. And let's create another model uh, post tag. So post tag and it is going to connect the post and the tag. So post references and tag references. Rails DB migrate. Let's uh, save our changes. So git add all git commit uh, models for tag and post tag. Okay, now let's finally open our uh, code and uh, uh, add the associations. So I'm going to VS Code. Um, let's find the application. Here it is. And add the associations. So we've created a few different models. We've got a post that belongs to user and a post will have uh, many post tags. So it has many post tags and uh, it will have uh, many tags through post tags. And we are going to add something similar to our tags. So a tag is going to have many post, post tags and many uh, posts through post tags. Okay, we're done with the associations and we will also need to add uh, the select uh, fields into our post. So let's go to our uh, application. Here it is. And let's navigate to slash posts. And now when I go to create a new post, I can select the body and a user. Well, let's uh, first uh, make it so that we don't have to type an ID of a user, but we have a drop-down select. But we don't have any users or any posts or, or any tags in our application yet. So let's generate some using faker. So let's add the, the gem faker, bundle, add faker. And now let's go to our seeds 
and generate some fake uh, users and some fake uh, tags. So let's say 10 times do, uh, and then we are going to create users. So user.create email will be faker internet.email and uh, tag dot create and a tag is going to have a name it will be faker uh, movie dot title for example let's just check if fake movie title exists let's say rails console fake movie title okay this uh, faker method works and for internet email it also works okay so uh, let's quit the console and say rails to be seed Okay, and now again, let's go to bin dev and open our form for creating a post. Here it is. Let's open it in the code. We are going to go to the views, posts, uh, form. So here we have input for user ID. We are going to change the input field for a select field. So let's say form.select. We are going to select the user. Let's remove all these uh, auto-generated classes. So we are going to have the collection to select from, so we'll say user dot block, and we will need the ID and the uh, email. So block uh, email and ID. Let's see if this works. Okay, here we have this drop down. So we s see the labels of the emails, and uh, we select the actual IDs. Let's see if we manage to create this post. I will create this uh, post for this Vito guy. Create post. Okay, user must exist. For some reason, it uh, didn't work. Let's see why. So, um, we passed in the user. Okay, maybe we should actually have not just user, but user ID here. So, user ID. Let's try once again. I'm going to try to create the post for this Vito. Create post. Okay, and the post has been created. I go back and it saves. Let's also uh, make it so that we can select tags. So, let's create one more uh, field. Uh, so we will say form dot uh, label tag IDs and form select tag IDs and here we are going to say tag dot block and instead of email we will have name. Let's see if it works. Okay, and here we have all the tags. But at the moment we will be able to select just one tag. We want to be able to select multiple tags. So we will pass the option multiple true. So let's say multiple true. Okay, it didn't work. Maybe I should pass it uh, in HTML options. So I will make it like this. Okay, and now I can select multiple tags. So let's select a couple of tags. I'm uh, clicking uh, the command or control button to select multiple. Otherwise, it's, it is going to be just fun. Let's select two. Click update post. And uh, did it work or did it not? It did not work because we had this unpermitted parameter tag IDs. So the tags have not been saved. We need to permit this parameter in our controller. So let's go to our uh, posts controller. And in the post params, we are going to permit tag IDs. That allows uh, an array. Let's now try to save the post once again and see if uh, these values do get saved. So I'm going back. I will select a few values, click update post and go back and you see the values have been stored. So I see them selected once again when I go to edit. I can select one more value, the fourth. I go back and you see this fourth value has also been stored. So it gets saved, but you see the select doesn't look beautiful and we can't uh, start typing to find the right value. And here also we have just a basic HTML5 uh, uh, multi-select that is not really styled nicely. So here finally we are going to implement slim select. Let's before this save our changes. So git uh, status, git add all, git commit main, select uh, user and uh, tags. Okay, so finally let's add slip select. Let's go to the installation instructions. And here we see npm install uh, uh, slim select. Well, um, in our application we're not using uh, npm and uh, we are using uh, instead input maps. So uh, we're going to write the command uh, bin uh, rails, oh no, actually bin uh, import map uh, bin slim select. 
So bin input map pin instead of npm install. Okay, it says pin in slim select. Let's type get status, and here we see that config input map dot rb has been modified. So here it is, and you see it has pinned slim select. Okay, and next the instruction says that we need to import uh, slim select into our JavaScript. We're going to do this with a stimulus controller. So let's create a stimulus controller. Rails generate stimulus slim uh, or slim select, whatever. Let's just name the controller slim. And let's open this controller. I'll just copy this code. And let's go to slim controller. Here it is. And inside the connect, we are going to uh, initialize this new slim select. And uh, here, next to import, on the top, I'm going to say import slim select from slim select. And on the connect action of uh, this controller, we are adding this new instance of slim select. Okay. And here you see it offers us uh, to have some kind of uh, element by ID. So to find some kind of element by ID, uh, we're going to do it in a slightly different way. Uh, as we are using stimulus JS, we need to, well, uh, import this data controller slim. And we're going to add it to our, let's say, to our tag, to our tags or to our user, whatever. I'm going to have an empty array here and here in the HTML attributes, I'm going to say data and we're going to say data controller will be slim. Let's see if anything changed. Okay, I will start the bin dev server once again. And nothing seems to have changed. Uh, let's uh, open our console. So, and you see we have some kind of error. Could not find select element. So uh, it could not find this uh, select element. There are two ways of uh, uh, fixing this. One would be via uh, defining a target, and the other one would be just by having this dot element. So uh, by having this dot element. We actually don't need to define a target because we are defining the stimulus controller on this exact field. So let's say we will say uh, this dot element and let's refresh. And here we have the controller defined and we don't have the error. And you see we have some kind of like uh, drop down field. Well, actually, this is the unstyled slim select. So if I select this user, you see this user is selected instead, or this user is selected instead. I will start searching for rows, for example, and you see this user is found. I can select this user. So you see the select kind of works, but it is not styled. So we need to also import the slim select styles. You see the JS has been imported via input maps, but the style sheet has not been imported uh, in any way yet. So let's import the style sheet. Let's do it in application. Uh, well, actually, before doing it in application, you could also try to import the styles uh, in your JavaScript controller. In some cases, uh, depending on your application setup, this might work. You might, might want to be able to type import and you would have slim select slash dist slash uh, slim select dot CSS. So in some setups, this would work but not in uh, my setup. So I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to import uh, the CSS in application.html.erb. Let's try doing this. So here I have this link and you see it gives me an error. I'm just going to remove this link and close it here. And let's refresh. And you see the styling has actually been applied. So uh, I don't have any errors and the styling is applied. Here it is. So I can start searching for, uh, let's say, Nathalie. And here she is. And I can select Nathalie. So it seems to be kind of working. And uh, let's also try applying the same data controller slim to our tags. Uh, so uh, let's uh, just actually copy it. I will say multiple true, comma, data controller slim. I will refresh the page and here you see the values have all been placed in nicely. So it looks nice. I will click this. I will select, uh, let's say, 12 angry men and it has, it has been added to the array. I update the post, go back to edit and all these values that I have added to this multi-select have been stored successfully. 
And as for creating a new post, let's go back and try to create a new post. You see, we have a default value always selected and we don't want uh, just a random new user to be selected by default. So let's also add the uh, allow blank true. Now I will refresh and nothing seems to have uh, changed. Let's uh, see, maybe we need to say not allow, but include blank. I will go back and refresh and include blank seems to be working. So there is a no value selected by default and it fits us uh, more. We don't want to have just some kind of random value selected by default when creating a new record. So looks quite good. And one more actual way for importing this kind of style sheet would be doing it via application CSS. Or let's try to do it. Let's uh, maybe comment this line out. I will uh, copy the URL. And let's open our application CSS. So assets, style sheets, let's do it either in application CSS or application tailwind CSS. I think it will work the same way. Let's uh, try in application uh, dot CSS and I will say add import URL and here I'm going to have this URL in uh, braces and uh, let's close the statement and see if it works. I will refresh the page and it seems to be working. Now I will comment it out and you see it's not working. So this is another way of importing this CSS. And one more way of importing the CSS would be not just having a link, but having a style sheet link tag with this uh, URL. So let's try to do that. I will have, a, again, I'll copy the style sheet link tag and I will copy the URL. So uh, instead of saying application, I will say this URL. Let's see if it works. I refresh and you see it works. So here are three ways of uh, typing in uh, uh, import the style sheet. And it seems to be working. So, to the conclusion, in this episode we have installed uh, Slim Select, we have uh, defined it, and uh, we have added Slim Select to a um, select of a user or a select of multiple tags. If you need to customize your Slim Select, then you can always add uh, additional options right here. So, for example, if we go to the documentation and uh, open uh, uh, options, and, for example, you have this multi select and you don't want the tags to be closed whenever you select one. You would want to add something like, uh, let's see, um, at close on select. So we will disable close on select. Uh, now you see, close on select is enabled by default. When you select something, the form gets closed. Let's disable it. I will say comma, close on select, uh, false. I will save. I will restart the page and try to select a few more values. And you see the form doesn't close on select. So this way you can easily customize uh, your Slim Select by adding options here in directly in the Slim controller. And that's it. Thanks for being with me and have a great time coding. Goodbye.